if we go to rain and then go to behavior and then behavior tree editor it pulls up an editor for us and I'm going to dock that here towards the right uh, I mean sorry the left of uh, my hierarchy and I'm going to put my hierarchy here on uh, on this other tab just to dock it away a little bit this way I get more room for the editor but I'm fine with the editor being very vertical okay so now it says what kind of a tree do I want to create well I want to create a new one so now I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call it tornado twins behave because we never really do alright so hit OK and it creates a tree called tornado twins behave also if I go back to my project and open up the um, the resources folder inside of AI you'll see that a new file has been created tornado twins behave and it's an XML file and that's really what the behavior tree is doing it's saving uh, some XML away and the reason why that's handy is because you can create your AI then send the XML file to your friends and they can load it onto their character and basically share information that way it's pretty awesome I'm gonna move actually the project down here so that I have some more room for the hierarchy excellent so now that I have that I'm going to type this tornado twins behave name inside of our behavior tree mind if you've lost it it's under your shock trooper so let's type that in make sure all the capitals are the same and then it asks us what is the root name and as you can see here there is a sequencer called root and I'll explain this in a second but we're just gonna name it the same thing and call it root alright so now a sequencer is basically uh, a, a branch a branch off of this tree and uh, it can hold other objects so if I right click on it and I say create and I want to create an action for example I want the player to detect something then I click detect and as you can see now another node has been added and this is called a leaf node because a leaf is at the end of the tree a branch is somewhere halfway during the tree so that's uh, the difference between uh, a branch node and a leaf node now it gives it a random name detect something but I'm going to call it detect player we want it to detect the player now it asks us okay we need a couple of items here we want to uh, know what sensors are you using to detect the player so this character has a sensor on it we already clicked it and it's called sensor so let's rename that and call it smart sensor just so we know what we're talking about and type that in here as well smart sensor boom now it asks us what aspect in the world do you want to sense and we have not actually made anything to sense with except we wanted to find the player so if you open up the player object in your hierarchy and you'll notice that there's another object with the same name called player and if you scroll down you will see that there is already a decoration script which has an aspect variable called player so I'm gonna copy that um, in case you're wondering hey how can I give any object in the world an aspect name you just go to rain and then add aspect and then call it whatever you want so a visual aspect in this case adds the variable site here or an old factory old factory is a smell auditory is 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 a sound uh, tactile is things that you can touch and so on and so forth you can make your own as well okay so it's going to detect the player we have to type in what aspect he's detecting and so we're typing in player notice that there's no capital P in that then if he has detected the player we need to save the position of the player so that he can walk towards us and that variable we have to make up here so I'm going to make up a name and call it player position excellent so now that it has detected the player it's still gonna just stand there and do nothing so we're going to right click the sequencer and create another action and call it move which makes the character move so I'm going to rename this random number here and move to player that's what I'm going to call it then it asks us what is the target that we're moving towards well it could be some random uh, XYZ in the world or it could be a variable that we've made before and we have made it before because under the detect player node we made a variable called player position so I'm going to copy that move to player and as the variable I'm going to paste in player position 
Now it asks us what speed we want this character to move towards the player. I'm going to type in the letter 1. Okay, now if I play the game, you'll notice that the character starts walking towards me, but he, there's no animation, so it's kind of funny to see. Let's take a look at that real quick. As you can see, he's walking towards me, but he's totally skating. And he kind of walks as slow as a zombie, because we set this move speed to 1, which is fine, because I'm trying to go for sort of a zombie effect. Now let's go back to our Shock Trooper and see what animations are available. As you can see here, the animations under the Animation tab are only 1, so I'm going to increase that to 2 animations. But I don't have any yet, so I'm going to go to my hierarchy and open up the Shock Trooper. And as you can see, there are all these animations that we've already made for you. Literally um, uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars. Yeah, actually thousands of dollars went into animating this character. And you can use it for free in your game, aren't you a happy camper? So I'm going to go to the Wounded Walk, open that up without actually selecting it and then going towards this white icon which is a movie clip an animation clip so basically the animation data stored I'm going to drag that inside of our animations as element 0 and I'm going to drag it again into the default animation that he's going to play now let's go back to our move to player node or leaf node and say what animation do we want to use we're going to type in wounded walk Then it asks us, what do we want to do when the animation is done playing? Do we want to wrap it or loop it? Yes, we want to loop it. We don't want it to play only once. As long as he's walking, we want it to loop. And then the base speed is pretty much the playback speed of the animation. And I know by heart that that would be 1.5. But it's really just a matter of tinkering and playing the game and seeing if it really works well for you. So now when I run the game, going to click maximize on play so that you can see it perfectly you'll notice there is a walk animation as you can see he walks like he's wounded but it could also be a zombie I kind of love this animation it's one of my favorites however if I go hide behind something so for example these boxes here he walks straight towards me and he gets stuck because and this is exactly what I was hoping would happen because we have not set the path yet. So if I go back to uh, our Shock Trooper character here, remember this path manager that we have not set up because the character is not aware of what's going on in the world. It is blind. It's just walking towards a position of the player, but it doesn't know how to avoid obstacles and all that cool stuff. So we will do that in the next video. And that's where it gets pretty, pretty awesome. It's kind of like a big brother's watching you kind of a thing that the characters now all of a sudden know exactly what the world looks like and they can sense you much better and find your way around. So that's where it really gets, uh, gives tension to the game. So we'll do that in the next video. I hope you've liked it so far. Don't forget to save your scene. See you in the next one.